What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of Texas Redfish Hunter TV. Today we're going to be rigging for redfish. I asked you guys in the last live stream what you guys wanted to see video wise and a lot of you were saying rigging techniques and stuff. I know it's something that a lot of people want to know about so I figured I'd give you my three basic setups for rigging for redfish. Welcome to Texas Redfish Hunter TV, brought to you by the Redtail Republic, wherever your journey takes you, home of Redtail Rods and Redtail Optics, and Twang, add a dash to your beer or snack. Alright, so the first setup I'm going to talk about is actually probably the easiest setup and the easiest way if you're a beginner to go out and catch redfish, even more advanced people, you can never get away from the popping cork. So I'm going to show you how I rig up my popping corks. What I like to use is uh, like a seven foot medium rod. This is a medium red tail rod. This is actually Cora's, as you can tell. Seven foot medium. Uh, if you want to go a little bit farther on the cast, obviously go to something like seven two to seven six. Um, but seven foot medium, especially for me since I'm a kayak angler, is the way to go. Fast action tip is what kind of what you want too. Something with a little bit of backbone. Um, I have that paired on a spinning reel. This is a Penn Battle 2 2500. The reason I like throwing spinning reels with my popping corks is I don't like burning the brakes of a bait caster, which you can do throwing heavier lures. So if you're throwing a really heavy popping cork, you're going to want to do it with a spinning reel because, you know, it's kind of just a free spool type of thing. So also on this spinning reel, I have 20 pound braid. This is Power Pro braid that I am using. 20 pounds to 30 pounds is what I like using for inshore fishing, especially for redfish, something that's going to stand up to those hard runs that they obviously do. If you couldn't tell, I just dropped the line and it went back through all the eyes. So, got to redo it again. Alright, so now that I've got it all the way through the eyes correctly and I didn't drop it, uh, I'll show you the popping cork. I like using weighted popping corks. This one is an STX Ultimate cork. It's got good poppers and it gives you a really loud pop, which is what I like when I'm looking for popping corks. I also like stuff that has really thick mono leader instead of wire because wire bends and then they're pretty much useless. But if you use really heavy mono, uh, you know, really thick mono, it's going to be a lot easier and you're not going to, you know, break it. I've used this one for a very long time. I don't use it anymore because it is a little bit beat up, as you can tell. But, um, yeah, I like using popping corks like that, and especially weighted. That's what I look for in a popping cork. And I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to show you the knots that I do for these, but I'll tell you what I do. I just do a blood knot here um, to the top of the popping cork. Make sure you test your knots to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. That's good to go. Next thing I do is I put my leader on here. Now I'm going to be using, and you don't have to use this leader, I'm using Seaguar 20 pound. I use 20 to 30 pound leaders, fluorocarbon leaders, uh, especially if you're in really clear water, you're going to want to use fluorocarbon leaders. You can use mono if you're in dirty water, it's not a big deal. I just like using fluoro for whatever reason. And it's not Seaguar in particular, I just really liked this pink label the last time I used it so I bought a bunch of it and like 20 and 25 pound but you can use you know whatever you want fluorocarbon wise on the leader material. With my leader I like doing honestly long leaders at first. It's a lot easier to shorten your leader than it is to lengthen your leader because obviously you can't. So if you start with a really long leader you can then shorten it as the day goes on if they're not biting it if it's too deep. As, uh, I like usually starting with like a three foot leader, especially if I'm fishing in four foot of water. That's the type of leader that I like using. And then if I go shallower, obviously I'll shorten my leader and so on and so on, uh, depending on the depth of water I'm in. So that's kind of what I like to do. Big leader at first and then trim it down if you're not getting bites or if you start fishing shallower. And again, on the bottom, I just tie a typical blood knot. So now obviously I'm doing this for demonstration purposes, so I'm not going to waste a bunch of fluorocarbon leader because it is a little bit pricey. So 
I just made a really short one just to show you. But then I go to my, uh, if I'm using shrimp, which is what I'm usually going to be using, a shrimp lure underneath a popping cork, although you can throw, you know, soft plastic, you know, mullet imitation lures under your popping corks as well. Easiest thing in my go-to bait is a gulp shrimp. You've heard me say that a lot on the channel. It's probably the best bait to go to, especially when things are tough. I like using shrimp head jig heads from Norton Lures. Um, again, doesn't matter really what jig head you use. I'm throwing eighth ounce here. Um, that's kind of a medium. Uh, you can go to weightless hook with your shrimp, or you could go heavier. Depends on how much you want your bait to descend and how fast you want that bait to descend. My, again, I'm just showing you a basic setup, so I use an 8th ounce as kind of just a normal basic setup. And now here, from the popping cork to your hook, you're going to want to tie either a blood knot if it's normal, or you can even tie a loop knot here, give it more action. If you tie a loop knot as opposed to a blood knot, you're going to get a little bit more action out of that lure, which is maybe a good thing. But typical thing you'd use is just a normal knot, whatever your everyday knot you use is. So yeah, that is setup number one. Easy setup for redfish. That is definitely killer in a lot of different situations. You can never go wrong with a popping cork. Again, 20 to 30 pound braid, weighted popping cork, fluorocarbon leader, again, maybe 20 to 30 pounds, more if you're fishing on top of shell, and then a shrimp head jig head if you're using shrimp, or a regular jig head if you're using something like a typical paddle tail. So guys, that is gonna be it for part one of this rigging for redfish series. I went over the popping cork today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. That'd be much appreciated. If you have any further questions on a popping cork setup or what you should use, go ahead and put them in the comments below or email me at redhuntertx at gmail.com and answer any questions that you guys have. If you're new around here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for continued fishing content and for some tips and tricks along the way. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next week.